All right, well, hello and welcome everyone to LinkedIn Legal Blogging Group's discussion on the basics of legal blogging. It's presented by Lexblog. I am Michelle Newblom. I work over in the publishing and editorial department at Lexblog. And today we're just excited to host this live conversation. But if you ever have any questions after the matter or really at any point, um, just go toss it into the LinkedIn group, whether it's a member of the Lexblog crew or anyone in the community, you're bound to get an insightful answer. So. Lexblog founder and CEO Kevin O'Keefe is going to lead us through this discussion. And if at any point you have any questions, please just send them over in the Zoom chat and I'll monitor them and make sure they get to Kevin. So anyone watching on our socials, the Zoom link should be there if you ever want to hop in at any point and join the conversation. So with that being said, let's get started and I'll turn it over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> um, see a fair amount of familiar faces. Good thing that they came. Uh, this, this is really a... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, an opportunity to, I, I don't know, I use the LinkedIn Legal Blogging Group, maybe the wrong word, um, but really to help people that are members of the LinkedIn Legal Blogging Group and to revive it to something that it used to be. Um, when groups were first started on LinkedIn, um, you know, I started a group on legal blogging. It became very vibrant as a, you know, community, if you will, for people to ask questions and to get uh, answers. Um, you know, the day arrived when people started to think the internet was to spam it, to put things in front of people every which way that you could. And groups became overrun with, with people's posts about anything that was irrelevant uh, to a group. And they did that with the legal blogging group and it really declined. Um, but, it, but recently I started to see uh, people want to join the group from all around the world. You know, so if I waited, you know, a month, there might be, you know, 200 people that requested to join. Um, and uh, I felt a little bit bad that they weren't getting more out of the group than just pushing a button and, and joining it. So I came up with the idea that we should start to, to do a, just a discussion and we'll rotate the discussion every uh, two weeks on alternating topic. And we'll start with the same two topics, you know, which is basics, basics of legal blogging. And the second would be the use of, of uh, social media in conjunction with legal blogging. Um, but it can be very much a discussion. So people have questions. I mean, they can raise their hand. I, you, know, you can enter it in a chat window. Michelle will see it. And we'll just talk about that question. Because it wouldn't bother me if somebody asked a question and we talked about that. This is not a webinar. I hate webinars. There's no, there's no deck. I hate decks. So there, there isn't going to be any handouts. Uh, much better to have a conversation as if we were sitting around a pub where we could have questions and answers. Um, the... the, the but to, to talk generally about, you know, a blog and what it is, what you can do, and how that got started, and what worked and what didn't work, or, you know, all of that. Um, there are some things that I did want to talk uh, about, and we'll make this a recording as well. But uh, a blog is a publication, you know, and lawyers ought to take advantage of that. You know, you, you didn't get to write your own publication or have your firm publish your own independent publication. Um, before the internet, it would have been unheard of. Um, you wouldn't have had the time, you wouldn't have had the organization to do it, you wouldn't have the distribution channels. But now if somebody wants to publish a, a magazine, if you will, on, on uh, is legal issues in, uh, in highway construction, somebody could start it. You know, or highway construction defects, they could start a publication on. And they would be the only one in the country and they'd be known for it and they wouldn't have any problem getting seen because the internet works very well at getting people to what they want to see. You go to Google and people don't want to have to come back. So they subscribe to things. Um, so it's an independent publication. What blogs have somehow evolved into for firms is I've got to have content on my website to get content people to come to my website. You know, that isn't always true because those, those bloggers that there are those lawyers that blog and have a good blog. Let's say the example of this, you know, highway construction defects, they're going to have the most traffic profile back at their website um, by far. Probably going to have more traffic coming into that profile than they will at the website. So don't, you don't have to worry about those, those issues. It's a publication. You know, it's an independent publication <clears throat> separate from a website. You know, it's a blog. Now, you're going to see that some people have changed, but you don't see Seth Godin change. You know, why does Seth Godin have a blog? <clears throat> it's not on his website. It's Seth Godin's blog. It's an independent publication. 
you know, as far as Slack blog is concerned, you know, it's a community of legal blogs with 30,000. The reason I have the map up is to begin to track where some of the blogs are at around the world. <clears throat> but we don't care what you want to do. I mean, if you want to have a blog inside your website, we'll pull the feed in to Lexblog. <clears throat> I might feel sorrier for you that you didn't go out and establish a niche on it, but, but we'll, you know, we'll recognize it. But it, but it's all, it was separate to start. You know, so as people put up blogs, they were not on websites. They were, they were magazines, um, if, if you will. They, they tend to focus on a niche, very much a niche. Um, we, we have way too many blogs in Lexblog that are way too general. Um, you know, you, you have <clears throat> oftentimes in law firms, you have people organized by practice groups, um, which is basically like giving a trophy to the, everybody on the team, you know, and at, at age nine soccer. You know, everybody's got to be on the blog. Everybody's got, we got the practice group that has employment blog for Pennsylvania or something like that. They don't work <clears throat> because unless you're really going to do it to engage particular clients and to keep updates for existing clients, but if you're looking to build a name and to build a profile, um, to build relationships, to generate work, not having a niche makes it very, very tough. You know, having a niche is gold. You know, so if I'm in Pennsylvania and I'm doing employment work, I'm thinking about, is there a particular reg that HR people may have an interest in Pennsylvania on? I'm going to blog on that, not necessarily to limit my work to that area, but I'm going to practice in that. I'm going to blog on that because I'll get known. Because if I, if I blog on that niche, every HR executive, every HR director, and every general lawyer that has to deal with employment issues will know about my blog and use my blog and subscribe to my blog. And who do you think is going to have trust with all those people after I share information on this issue to get work on all types of employment issues? Me. <clears throat> so niches lead to riches when it comes to blogging. You have to have a niche if you really want to take off. And <clears throat> if you don't want to believe me, take a look at the successes. You know, there was no fashion law as a term, <clears throat> you know, 15 years ago when Stacy uh, Riordan coined the term became a fashion lawyer and now she does fashion litigation around the world <clears throat> you know the, the privacy law was there but it wasn't a lot on the net about it till tanya forscheid you know started a privacy law blog while she was at a you know large firm at proskauer you know you look at uh, new york business divorce you know there was no publication on that you know until peter marler started it <clears throat> now peter marler literally brings in, you know, north of $4 million a year. Only source of his work is his blog. Only source. He gets no work any other way. It's all relationships and reputation that he's earned by virtue of that, that niche. Um, you know, you, FMLA, you know, IP litigation for the Northern District of Illinois. I mean, and, and success leaves clues with blogging. It's not like we got to go figure it out at the firm, you know, if somebody wants to do IP litigation, all you got to do is look at, at, at Dave Donahue in Chicago and say, gee, is there a district court where we are? Well, of course there is. There's a district court where everybody is in the United States. Um, well, we should do a blog just like Dave did for our district, IP litigation. And we'll cherry pick cases at the appellate court and we'll cherry pick cases at the district court. And we'll just do summaries that we think are interesting, provide our quick take. And in a very quick period of time, the judges on who we are the clerks of the judges will know who we are, and the general counsel, the people that have litigation in our area on who we are. I mean, how would you like to be the lawyer that gets to call the firms that are in Palo Alto that have litigation starting in Chicago and say, I would like to be your local counsel for this case that I just started filing. You may know me, but even if you don't, I want you to know that I watch the tendencies of all the, all the judiciary here in Chicago and IP litigation. Here it is in my blog. He gets his work that way. Not only does he get work, he generates a lot of work for other, other uh, lawyers at, at Holland and Knight in, in Chicago. So those niches <clears throat> are, are gold. Now, you, you can't do a niche for which you don't have a passion. You know, so somebody told me, that 
you have to do a blog on estate taxes, that'd be worse than death. I mean, uh, no way, I'm not doing that. I can't do taxes, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna do you know, estate planning, no way. I don't wanna get good at that. Um, if somebody said, we want you to do a blog on some other aspect of my practice, plaintiff's trial work, I was a plaintiff's trial lawyer for a long period of time. So it was how to use learn treatises to impeach you know, defense doctors. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, and you could do a blog on that. It's more than just teaching, you would stay up to speed on different issues or see what people are doing. Um, do it what you're passionate about. And, and in, invariably, if I asked a blogger, how'd you get into this? Why'd you do it? What do you enjoy about this? And when, when I asked uh, Jeff Nowak in Chicago, you know, why the blog? You know, and, and Jeff's response was, well, I wanted to be Pope when I was a little kid, and I found out I couldn't qualify if I wasn't a priest. And then I went to, to you know, law school, I was going to be governor of Illinois, and then I decided I, that would be the worst thing I wanted to, to, to be. And uh, he goes, when I became a lawyer, I still wanted to help people. And then when I realized I could help employers, and he goes, maybe I'm on the wrong side on the, on the defense side versus the plaintiff side. He goes, but I really enjoyed it. And so he goes, that's what drives me with every blog post. He said, I'm not trying to generate any work because I'm just trying to help people trying to do their jobs. And he's looking to help, you know, HR people. And uh, he, he generates a lot of work. And uh, Jeff will, will put his kids through college without worrying about how much it costs. And uh, you know, he and his wife will go on nice vacations because they'll be invited to speak at different places um, or, or because they have the resources to take the family on, on nice vacations. And I, I look at that as that's about as good as it gets. You know, do the, do the type of work you want to do for the type of uh, people you want to do it for and to feel good about it. So <clears throat> he enjoys doing what he's doing. So you, you want to enjoy that. You, and so if, if I'm thinking about if I'm talking with somebody and I'm thinking about blogging, um, what should I do? I say, just get out the magic wand. You know, what's the type of work you want to do and who do you want to do it for? Um, and uh, it, because you can do it with blogging, there's nothing that prevents it. And the great thing about it is it doesn't take <clears throat> as many years. It took me 15 years you know, better part of 15 years be before I became a leader in my state bar, it's my state uh, trial lawyers association, uh, maybe a tad less, but that's a long time. It took more than a decade. Um, it, it would not take me today uh, to be a, one of the well-known lawyers in trial law, plaintiff's trial law in my state, um, Wisconsin, it'd probably take me two years and uh, I'd be very well known and for the right reasons. Um, that's pretty amazing um, to be able to do that uh, today. So any area that you wanna sink your teeth into or to take it to another height, you know, uh, you can do it with a blog. Um, and, and, you, and you get work kind of the old fashioned way, you get it from relationships and word of mouth. Um, there was a lawyer, you know, maybe it was you, Jamie, or somebody that said something about, uh, maybe it was somebody else, this is kind of like when, uh, you know, Abe Lincoln got their work. You know, it was kind of like out, you know, mingling with people, having a beer, um, you know, that type of thing. It's that type of way of, of, of getting work. Um, <clears throat> one thing that's also worth looking at with a blog is, is looking at opportunities. Um, because usually we start internally as lawyers, at least I did. <clears throat> you know, when, when they started doing... Um, reform, I started getting afraid, oh my God, are we gonna even be able to bring claims against people if the insurance companies continue their lobbies, you know, lobby efforts and change the law. <clears throat> what I didn't realize is there's so many other opportunities out there if that ever happened and it you know, never did. But businesses look for opportunities. Where might we go? Where's an opportunity in a market? Where the market could be? Could we develop a new product that could serve the needs of customers? Um, Lawyers tend to look at it like, what am I doing in this office and how do I get more of it? I'm doing this work. I'm not getting as much of it. I want to make sure I get more of it. And then they start talking about how I can market to get more. It's, 
But what if you ask them, are there other lawyers doing this? Oh yes, there's lots. Um, and so you're all competing for the same work. Yes, okay. And the market isn't necessarily growing. You haven't studied the size of the market, right? No. In, in fact, the market might be shrinking because there's fewer of, the, of these cases today. But lawyers are hell bent to get it done because they're that lawyer. They, this is what they do. <clears throat> a blog allows you to, to change course a little bit, to evolve without burning the boats behind you. So you could go and say, you know what? There's gonna be an opportunity because there's gonna be a change in employment regulations with the Biden administration to do that work. There's going to be uh, environmental legal changes. I could do that work. Um, I don't know it today, but I could study it and I could get good at it by blogging. And there's lawyers that I've been on calls recently with that are doing exactly that. Their firms have identified the areas that there's going to be a change over the next four years and they're going to get that work inside that four years because the regulations are changing. What they do is they saw an opportunity. These opportunities could be regional too. You know, you could look at what's going on in communities and whatever. Uh, but but it would it, lawyers should do that. In addition, take a look at bloggers in other places that have been successful. You know, I tell the story over and over till you know, I'm blue in the face. But there was a, a gentleman that had two phone books, one from New York and one from Chicago. And he got on the train in New York and he opened them up side by side and he flipped through the yellow pages. This is quite a ways back. And I'm not talking like 10 years, I'm talking like 50 or 60 years ago. And he looked at the businesses that New York had that Chicago did not have. And he went and started businesses in Chicago that New York had that Chicago did not. <clears throat> and he became very, very wealthy and ultimately a philanthropist. And you look at it and people say, well, that's impossible. Well, it wasn't impossible. And he probably made a case to certain banks that they should lend him the money because he's going to start these businesses. And this is what his research has shown him. Well, you could go to Lexblog, Lexblog.com and say, what states have something that my state does not? You could call the lawyer in the other state and she would tell you what's worked, what's worked on her blog, what hasn't worked on her blog, how much work has generated, what she would do today that she didn't do back then what to avoid. Here's how you use social media in conjunction with. Give you a roadmap. You could still do the work you're doing and do this for three hours a week. And all of a sudden you've got this new business that it, it has grown. I mean, probate litigation. I mean, I, I think there's only like three or four blogs on it. It's a great area. There's one person that's going to raise his entire family, a former captain in the first Gulf War, started a probate litigation blog in Florida because he realized his firm did litigation and probate and estate planning work. But he heard about this litigation, will contest and whatnot. He didn't see people with a high profile. So that's what he decided to do. And it turns out that, that Florida has pe people that, that retire down there that are wealthy and that their kids get in disputes over their assets. Um, and that's, that was all just looking at what wasn't there. Um, you know, Aaron Lukens on here. I mean, what, what you know, look, imagine a niche about serving, you know, you know, process, you know, internationally. Um, you know, I mean, he doesn't need more competition, but the ability to go out and identify that that can be done because he was aware that that can be done and how it can be done. And being able to duplicate that and say, well, I can talk about that. I know something about that. I created my own practice. Um, it, that's, it, it, you know, success leaves clues uh, at, at different types of, uh, you know, all over uh, the places. We could get down to such basics here too, you know, because sometimes you get, you know, <clears throat> dotting the I's and crossing the T's and I'm not the best at that. Um, but uh, uh, <clears throat> things like names of blogs, domain names, those type of things, <clears throat> you know, a blog should have a title, you know, just like a magazine. So, you know, it was a lot easier when Lexblog started to say, you know, walk down the aisle Barnes & Noble where they had magazines because people would say, well, what's Barnes & Noble in it today? And where are the magazines? There aren't many left. But in the grocery store, there actually are magazines still and they have titles. They don't say the name of the company on the top of the magazine. 
<clears throat> they tend to say sports illustrator, they tend to say, you know, something else. Uh, think about your blog as that. It's not about you. It's about people coming there that know what you're publishing on. It's your magazine. <clears throat> you want that title. When it comes time to send four questions to someone so that they can in fact be interviewed by you asking them questions, they don't want to be interviewed by your website. I mean, really, if you call them up and say, listen, I've got a website. It's to advertise. It's to tell people how great I am. It's to tell people how, how great our firm is. It's all of our contact information. So they can get a hold of us 24-7 now. 24-7, it's got a chat window on it. Um, would you do an interview for the front of it? I mean, it's like, really? I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it, but if you said, um, <clears throat> I publish a magazine on, you know, uh, probate litigation in, uh, in Washington, and they can see it. It's, it's Washington Probate Litigation, published by my firm. It's a lower. It's lower. It's linked to your firm, but the big masthead is this. Um, it's a. It's a. It's a. It's a publication that is widely read um, by estate planning lawyers, um, financial services companies, individuals that are wealthy. Um, you're a financial planner. Would you like to be uh, featured on the? You know, in in my next post. Of course they would. They'd love that. They would thank you for doing it. And in fact, you did that because they refer work to you because you have that publication. So you're using your blog smartly. You're not trying to wait till people come. You're trying to feature them so that they, when they have matters, can refer it over to you because they like you and they know you. Um, so you're using that, that because you have this magazine. The way that the firm is named, it could be, like I said, published by, brought to you by. Lexblog has been as guilty as anybody by following the first firm that said our name has to be across the top of it. And we should have told them to, you know, go to hell. That is not the way these things work. But as soon as they did it, we told everybody, go look at anything on the internet that you see and come back and tell us what you want to do. Shame on us. Um, but we did that. And so now we got a lot of blogs that say firm's name across top, and then it has a little title, like it's a page in a website. It's okay, but it's probably generating significantly less uh, engagement and relationships and reputation things than if they would have done a blog in the name of a, a magazine, um, if you will. And uh, <clears throat> this is publishing, you know, and there, there, you, there's nothing wrong with, with, with marketing, but this is, this is publishing, you know, so look at it the way that lawyers used to have articles in publications is that gravitas associated with it. That was not necessarily published with the firm's banner head. Um, so it's just a philosophical thing that I've always stayed with the publishing industry versus more of a marketing industry approach with blogging. Um, domains with blogs, you just, you, you come up with a domain. They're not difficult. I mean, we're still, you know, how many, you know, we're 20 some years into this uh, internet, 25 years uh, where we all started using it. But if I have to come up with a blog name for Mississippi probate litigation, blog, I'll bet it's available. Um, you know, or, or if it's just Mississippi probate litigation, you know, you use that. If I have to have Mississippi probate litigation today, monitor, you know, anything, insights, <clears throat> there's lists of words. You just go to the name in Wikipedia for publications and you come down with whatever you like. And you, you, you just you, you, you do it. it it's, it's easy to do. Um, so you don't have to lose any sleep about a title, which is the name of the magazine, nor the domain. And so you just figure out what it's going to be. It's Mississippi Probate Litigation Insights. And then my domain name is the same thing. You just want those two in harmony so it doesn't look like you're, you're gaming um, the, uh, the system. As far as, you know, you guys probably know as much as anybody today. It used to be complicated, but... Uh, on the technology platforms that are out there. I mean, I think WordPress just came out with something yesterday, you know, as far as the phenomenal number, you know, it just blows people's mind, but they're the de facto publishing platform for the world. They will run 90% plus of, of uh, publishing on the, on the line, on the net. Um, and, it, you know, just like people use Word today, I'm old enough to remember there were a lot of people that said that Word is not to be used. We should be using Word Perfect as lawyers. And there was a real heavy debate on this in the early 2000s. Really like, it was, there was serious, and really, I mean, you think about it, Bill Gates starts his company, his dad's a lawyer, 
And he you know, realizes, you know, we can suck in a lot of people with a piece of software called Word because they didn't really make stuff. You know, they, they're out there doing software, but it's more of a, you know, a network type of thing and gets it out there. And like, he's going to run Word Perfect out of business. Does he have any idea? All the lawyers that use this and business people do it. Well, they ran it off and uh, uh, Matt Mullenweg is going to run off every other type of publishing solution. It will be 90, it will be 90%. You're already... You're already over, I think it's over 40% of all websites today are run on WordPress. Um, it might be 70% of the top thousand websites are run on WordPress. It's not just blogs, it's, this, is, this is websites. And it's 70% of websites with a content management solution are run on WordPress. <clears throat> and for you as, as lawyers and law firms, um, the reason you need to run on WordPress is there is a word, there's a tax when you leave something else. So if somebody says, we've been publishing on this platform, we got a boatload of content, and all now has to be migrated to WordPress, because it will at some point in time. You're going to pay a lot to do that, to get, it, to get it off of it. In addition to that, your software is likely to be outdated, underperforming, and, and less secure today if it's not on WordPress. Now, you can have people tell you something to the contrary, but there aren't 200,000 people today working on your software. Where there is 200,000 people today, working on everybody's software that is using, you know, WordPress. Um, and it's just an open source solution, which means you need somebody to run it for you in, in the background. You know, in most cases, you have a, a managed WordPress solution. I mean, you don't have to worry about stuff on your own to set things up. You can go to wordpress.com. <clears throat> it's the largest installation of WordPress in the world. It's owned by a company, Automatic which is Matt Mullenweg's uh, company. We, Lexbog, is a managed WordPress platform for the law. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's tailored for the law that has the support, you know, the design and everything else that someone might need. But you likely don't want to handle these things on your own. I mean, I have priests, I mean, I've got a dog in this hunt, but I started the company out of a garage needing to feed seven of us on the belief that lawyers shouldn't be run, probably won't run their own stuff online. And it turned out to be, to be true. Um, so what you want to do is to find one of those partners, have a managed WordPress platform, or have a managed WordPress <clears throat> operation so that you can, you can have the thing run for you and you can worry about publishing. You don't worry about anything else because then what you know is all of the core updates from WordPress are coming to you all of the time. And any feature updates to benefit you are coming to you all of the time. And uh, right now we're even moving from what has been a traditional WordPress to Gutenberg platform, which you know, there's a lot of debate over what it's gonna do for us and not do for us, but it is gonna be beneficial. And you're gonna to wanna to just have that taken care of uh, for you. If anybody has any questions at any time about anything to do with blogging, they can sure fire them away. Michelle can see them in a chat. You can raise your hand and she can unmute you as well. Um, but I don't, I don't have to talk for you know, X period of time. Um, it's up to you, up to you guys. Um, The go ahead, Sean. Can you unmute Michelle? Or thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. I appreciate your talk. Um, what's your take on? It, it seems to me, and I could be wrong, but it seems that Lexblog is mostly uh, a text-based platform currently, uh, and it seems that people are losing their interest in reading these days, and they'd rather watch videos about everything. Um, what, what's, what's your take on that? Yeah, there, there's a lot of discussion internally uh, on exactly that. Um, I've done a lot of videos personally. So I've been doing them for probably 10 years where I would go out and interview people or and then even last year, just sit in front of a, my iPhone and record things for 25 minutes. I think they're pretty effective. <clears throat> and, uh, and I think it also should be things you enjoy doing. So the, whether it's a podcast, video, or writing, if you enjoy it, that's really important. You know, and so you can have fun with it. Um, videos, what I, did, what I did with videos is I did them live on Facebook to make it kind of fun. So all I did was I have a, I have this, <laughs> and you can sit on top of a counter or the floor or whatever, 
and then I have these, which are just the you know lavalier mics, and uh, and then I just pushed a button and went live and talked, <clears throat> and and I would use a uh, you know piece of paper and I'd make notes on it for the for an audience. I would say here's what I'm talking about or whatever, <clears throat> and then what I did was I got I brought I I put that up on on uh, YouTube <clears throat> and. Uh, and it, it, it's creating a body of work. And then I also had it transcribed right away. There's some services that you could use that can transcribe pretty cheap and then you clean it up. And that becomes very good blog content too. And then you can run those on your blog. You got the transcript. And I think it's real effective. And I think Lexblog, I know Lexblog, you know, has to look at how we have, you know, multimedia sounds old, but it's, it's now it's actually a word again. Uh, we're, we're talking about what we should do for podcasts. We already do, you know, facilitate the, people, the, the use of people putting out podcasts. We need to have at Lexblog, which is a little bit primitive in the way we have content displayed right now um, from our from our <clears throat> bloggers, have places where you know videos can be displayed. You know, so people want to check in, and people can subscribe to that. You know, to your to to yours. I I, I think. We're a little bit primitive as a profession and thinking whatever we do, that's what people do. So, you know, I'm a huge believer in Facebook. A lot of people aren't because they go, it's just not for me. They violated people's privacy rights. It's an evil place. And Matt Mullen or, or uh, in, uh, you know, uh, Zuckerberg is an evil guy. Well, there's, you know, if I had to point out this, the houses in my neighborhood and went to the door, does anybody use Facebook here? I bet I couldn't find anybody that doesn't. And uh, they're all there, which means we have to interface with them. There's people that, like you just said, they're going to watch video and other people aren't. You can decide whether you want to interface with them or not. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think video can be very effective. And then the other thing that video can do for you, for lawyers, you have to decide how you want to do it. Um, with a publication or a video program, it gets you in the door of anywhere. So if I ping... Um, American lawyer media, and I say, okay, you've got your legal week, you know, international program going on uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, can I get a free pass to that? Yes, you can, Kevin. <laughs> there it is. Um, so now here I'm watching it on Zoom. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'd be in New York, you know, and it's free. And and then what I do is I actually use the multimedia almost to, to cover things. <clears throat> but a creative lawyer could do it in any way that they want to. They could walk in that door, put up a tripod and say they're at legal week. This is what they're, they're seeing there. I have watched people really build nice profiles by just being, by being creative and watching <clears throat> who does what, you know, who looks, who do they like online? So I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, if you're doing stuff on it, drop us a note on it. I'd be curious to see what you're doing. And even for us to feature people that are doing interesting things. I, I think I fall into that category, but I definitely don't want to be a, a self-promotional me monster. So I'll, I'll talk to you about it after. Yeah, you don't. This is the exact opposite. You're basically shining a light on other people. You know, you're 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 really shining a light on other people. Um, that's what I. It goes back. Um, I don't know who I was telling the story to. Maybe it was Greg Story, our, our vice president, yesterday. But it was a first-year intern in the company, and nobody covered conferences with video that I had ever seen. <clears throat> and so we showed up in Chicago at the ABA tech show and he took a monopod, you know, a large, it was a small then, but it was large a camera and a Bluetooth mic. <clears throat> My son who was still in college held it. <clears throat> and I pointed out the people to go up and interview. And he went up and said, uh, you know, Mr. Suskind, that was a very interesting talk. We just go, <laughs> can we catch you for a couple of minutes? And it was phenomenal. And it, it was the first interview that Jack Newton had ever had uh, about Clio. And it was their first year in business. They'd only been out for like two or three months. And uh, it, everybody so thanked us. Uh, and so it was the exact opposite of, hey, look at us. And, but it, it opened so many doors. And it still does today, uh, just interviewing people. And because you don't have to travel today, 
with the internet. You have wonderful blog by just saying, I would like to catch up and interview people. And uh, very, very few people will, will deny the request. Anybody else have any questions? Nope. Um, I'm just here because I need to see other human beings on a Friday afternoon, Kevin. There you go, Aaron. So, <laughs> pretty much it. My, wife, my wife is so sick of me. We've been in the same house for 10 months now, and <laughs> the cat doesn't, doesn't give good conversation. So, In another, uh, I don't know how many days it is. It's only about another 12 days. I'm going to get my second shot. And, uh, you know, and then when they're on TV, they're telling us, you know, you're really not going to be safe and you really shouldn't do, you shouldn't change anything. And I'm thinking, you give me two vaccines, <laughs> I'm traveling. <laughs> I'll take my chances from that point on. I feel the same way. I feel very much the same way. Um, the One of the other things that uh, to think about with blogging that's different than writing, because everybody thinks it's about writing. So, you know, when I first started to talk about blogging, 15, 16 years ago, when you'd say, what is a blog? And you'd have web blog, abbreviation is blog. You know, it would be uh, a 10 posts in reverse chronological order. It can have a link to each post. Uh, it was very dumbed down. But one of the things I did talk about was it's a conversation. It's not writing. And if you think about a conversation, a conversation is listening. Everybody will remember the first person that walks in the room that starts shouting but it's for all the wrong reasons. They'll be totally turned off by him or her because all they do is talk, they shout. And why do they do that? Because they wanna get attention. Well, that's 99.9% .9 of the bloggers out there, legal bloggers. Why am I blogging? To get attention. <clears throat> it's a conversation. So if you had words on either side of the spectrum and over here you had, um, you know, uh, discuss, conversation, listen. Those are pretty favorable words. Over here you had shout, don't listen, scream. You'd say, I don't wanna be there. I do not wanna be there. I wanna be here. <clears throat> okay, so if you're gonna be there, you have to listen. And <clears throat> where are you listening? You're listening in a room that you create because there may not be a room of the people that you're trying to reach on this subject that exists. So it's not like somebody's gonna invite you and say, hey, come on down to the, uh, the arena or the social event where everybody's congregated that you wanna reach. The influencers that could talk about you, referral sources, potential clients, your existing clients, everybody that has a passion on this issue. You go, well, I'm not aware of that place, um, but you can create it. <clears throat> There are listening tools because if you're going to listen first before you talk, you have to find a place to listen. So if I'm listening to a term, imagine I'm working in the legal tech industry and I'm trying to expand my market, not just in the United States, but overseas. I'm listening to certain publications. And there aren't very many. There's one out of the UK. There's one in the United States. Maybe after that, I mean, there's a couple in, I mean, Jason Shea has one in social justice arena. After that, you got to listen to the word legal tech. And I use an application called Feedly. It's just feed L-Y. And I can put into it sources, sources like that's the name of the publication, that's the name of the blog, that's the name of the newspaper, whatever it is, trade publication, a, a association publication, and then subjects. Subjects are legal tech, maybe the name of a company. Maybe I want to monitor the term Clio. Maybe I want to monitor another company. Okay, now I've got <clears throat> the listening coming into my room. Okay, and after a while, it'll expand. I'll figure out the words that work better for seeing the right stuff. I'll find other sources that people are talking about. It's coming in to my room so I can, so I can listen. <clears throat> I've created the busy intersection of conversation. These are where these people are intersecting. Some, because some of them are referencing each other because they're not shouting, they're engaging. They're referencing what Kevin said. Kevin sees that they said that. That's intriguing. I can do the same thing using Twitter. I can create a Twitter list. And everybody uses Twitter and it's just a river of junk going by so fast I can't see anything. 
okay, until they figure out how to use it. But if they set up alerts for the right people, so they would see that up on the top, or they set up a Twitter list, they could see. They could see the people that are tweeting from Africa on legal tech issues. They could see the people tweeting from the Ukraine on legal tech issues. They could see the people from the United States tweeting on legal tech issues. They're coming into this busy intersection too. They're listening, okay? So now when you blog, you wanna reference these, these people. It's a conversation because if I reference them, they will hear me. Now, there's different ways to make sure that they hear you. I could send them an email and say, interesting story wherever. It might be a New York Times reporter because you saw the, you saw it because of the words. Interesting story in this morning's paper about such and such. I shared it with my readers on such and such. And they don't know that your publication isn't the second coming on this topic because it might be the only publication on, on this. And they're going to thank you and you're going to connect with them on LinkedIn. And you tell me how you're going to do that by having a blog that's just going to blast things out there. And a New York Times reporter is going to thank you for the post and you're gonna connect on LinkedIn. It ain't gonna happen. It is not going to happen. And so what you're doing is you're using the, your blog as currency for engagement because you understand that it's about listening and entering into a conversation. This works. You, if you use Twitter, you share your post on Twitter, referencing the person that you covered to give them a hat tip or you reference them in some other way. You know, Lux Blogs, Kevin O'Keefe, said this or that. It's referencing your post. It's linking to your post, but I will see it because you're mentioning my Twitter handle and I go and I read your blog. And the number of lawyers that do that are zero. There are very few. There's a handful that do that really well. If you do it, you win. So not only have you picked up a niche topic, you're out there. You're like the Green Bay Packers competing against a great school football team. Because all the other people that are trying to use blog are the grade school football team, and you're rolling over them. They don't even know what you're doing. I mean, you're sitting there referencing other people and meeting other people. And that's what blogging can be. <clears throat> and that style of blogging is enjoyed by other people because you're sharing things that they wouldn't have seen. You know, I really realized when my blog took off years ago <clears throat> and it was bringing things to people that they didn't see. You know, so if I'm out there, there weren't many lawyers out there studying blogging by following blogging in other places. And if I brought to the masses in the legal arena, what I was reading in other places, they seemed to appreciate it. <clears throat> and the cool thing was that I was marketing my blog because other people started to talk about my blog inside and outside of legal um, because I was mentioning them. Um, so that conversation approach, down to earth style and writing can really benefit people. So you, you can still do the reporting. Let's say you're not referencing what you're reading all the time, but you're just reporting on you know, probate litigation issues, what's reported in the courts you know, in a state like Florida or Wisconsin, you know, Illinois, that's gonna have more of that. But give it a conversational approach when you can, you know, where you're, you're sharing things and then you're, you're you're saying what your take is um, on it. Um, I find that's, that really works well. And there, there's nothing more fun <clears throat> in blogging and in the use of social media as ancillary to it than meeting people, for me. <clears throat> um, meeting people that can lead to conversations about work. Um, and <clears throat> it still happens where you get somebody out of the blue that call, calls and says, hey, I was reading a piece and such and such. But it's a lot easier to say, I'm going to do it today. You know, I'm going to see what's available today. And I'm going to connect with somebody and I'm going to create an exchange and I'm going to get to know them. Um, and you can do that with, with, with your blog. I mean, to show you how just, you know, I use the same example sometimes over and over, but this is just a real recent one. I was talking to uh, my COO and I said, you know, you know, it's, it's been a long time since I, you know, I got, I, the opportunity to sit down with Matt Mullenweg, founder, co-founder of WordPress for a few hours years ago. <clears throat> I said, a really neat guy and a young guy. 
we should get closer to WordPress. I mean, they they probably got to follow what we're doing on different things for professionals. I'd like to get tight with them. <clears throat> you know, so I know the only way to do that is to you know draw his attention on the internet. Well, I see an article in the New York Times within days that is writing about Matt having a, a distributed workforce. You know, they don't need an office, and how it's always been what they've done is a multi-billion-dollar company now. Uh, <clears throat> so I write about. It. And I shared on, on Twitter. It wasn't 10 minutes till Matt responded on Twitter and said, we should get together again sometime. <laughs> and the next morning, you know, they're setting up a time for me to get on Zoom with Matt, you know, the next week. That that's impossible. That's just impossible. I'm sitting there trapped, you know, my condominium downtown CL, and I want to talk to Matt Mulway and I want to be on the Zoom next week. That's impossible. But I blogged about him, so it resulted because I'm blogging for the relationships, not necessarily just for the attention, because um, I wanted that to happen, some result. And I think lawyers can do that in, in many cases. You know, you know, think about an association. You have clients that are members of associations. Okay, who? What are those associations? Okay. Does that association have a Twitter handle? I mean, or does that association have a website? Probably. Does it have an executive director? Absolutely. Monitor that thing. Monitor the name of the association. Some they're written about other places. Let me tell you, there is no lawyer <clears throat> that is going to write about an association and say that they look like they have a good event coming up and look at the quality of the speakers that they have and the subjects that they're covering other than you. And when you drop the executive director a note and says, hey, that's a pretty impressive program that you got going on. Um, I share with my readers at such and such. You will be speaking at next year's uh, conference. And uh, if it's the type of thing that you actually are gonna be at anyway, then you tell you let people know in your blog, you hope to be there. Um, Cause it's telling the readers of your blog that you stay up to speed, you're members of these associations, but you're basically letting the association layers know <clears throat> that you cover them. And I used to do that. And I, I don't know if I had 10 readers in my blog when I was letting the Legal Marketing Association know that I was uh, you know, covering them. But I got to speak at very large events uh, after that. And I did my darndest to highlight the good work that they were doing. Not as a, not as a sham, it was when I thought they were doing good, good work. So think of that, that ability to be in the conversation but you've got to frame the conversation by what you're listening to, you know, associations, people, publications, you know, words. Um, and I, I, I would think of it in, with two analogies in play. One, the busy intersection. Where's the busy intersection of where these people are congregating, you know, in the conversation. And you're going to frame that in the room, in this room that I'm creating by sources and, and by subjects. And I'm going to have to use listening tools like Feedly and Twitter to be able to, to be able to, 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 to do that. Um, uh, that. That works. You will grow the profile of your blog. And when people Google your name, <clears throat> after they've got your name from someone else, they're going to see you cited by these other people. And that's impressive because it doesn't matter that a lawyer in Florida is citing you when you're in California, <clears throat> people will see it. Um, and so will the so will the social media algorithms and the search algorithms also be impacted by that um, as well. Any questions at all? You know, ask away. <clears throat> I'm going to be around here about another five minutes before my my voice and the clock gives out. Um, see, Aaron, if I lived in your time zone, we'd be drinking beer. <laughs> it is almost two o'clock. I'm thinking. <laughs> I had, to, I had to do a uh, uh, a show this week in legal blogging yesterday um, at, at noon here. It was three, and uh, I had to do it over beers because uh, uh, my guest my guest thought we should. <laughs> um, is, there, is there any questions on anything? I was going to just I, I, anything at all. Um, I could shoot you a question that I see a lot of people ask if no one else wants to bring one up, but. 
Um, what's your suggestion for writing to the medium that is blogging and differentiating a blog post from various forms of other legal writing? Yeah, I mean, uh, it all depends on what you're going to cover you know, as far mm -hmm. as legal, legal writing. If, if, I'm, if I'm an appellate lawyer and I'm doing analysis on, analysis on a subject, your, your blog isn't going to be probably that far from a, you know, a, a law review paper. It may, there may be portions of it that aren't that far from a, a brief, obviously shorter. But, you know, if I look at, at uh, some of the pieces out there, you know, I can't do that because I don't have that skill anymore. I stopped <clears throat> writing briefs as soon as I, you know, as fast as I could when I became a lawyer. Um, so I think you're going to have to do it in certain cases to be in the conversation. Uh, you know, if I'm writing on IP litigation issues, um, in Northern District of Illinois, you know, I'm intersecting with the judges in the way that they're anal analyzing cases um, as precedent. It's going to be very legalese. Um, and you probably looked at you know, blogs like uh, you know, Francis Pelleggi's that's been, has been blogging to, for 15 years on Delaware corporate litigation because they have a chance to record. It's going to be legalese because he's doing quick synopsis of the case. I think you're going to then phase into an area where you can talk about cases without getting into all the, the citations um, in, the, in the precedents and whatnot, because most people are gonna know what those cases are. If you're in a niche and you're saying for this case or whatever, it's it. So, I mean, if, if you're talking about first minute, first minute issues and free speech, there's not that many cases that are citing, you know, <clears throat> the differences between commercial speech and free speech and whatnot. So you wouldn't have to use the citations. You're going to see though, uh, Jeff Nowak of the world, um, you know, and he had a great answer to this. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm dealing with FMLA, which is highly regulatory, highly case law. Uh, it's all federal. Um, he goes, but if I tell somebody that, that, the, that the court denied a motion for summary judgment, they wouldn't have a clue what the hell that meant. First, what is the court? I mean, that's, they think of the court as the courthouse. And they have no idea that the court is the judge first a you know, a jury or something. And what the hell is a summary judgment? And what's a motion? I mean, they don't even know what a motion is. So I'm going to write that. He goes, they can't relate to that. So he says, this is what somebody wanted to do. This is what somebody said they shouldn't be able to do. And the judge said, no soup for you. And that's all. He's, that's how he ended it. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I'm, he goes, I'm just pulling in my Seinfeld stuff that I continue to use throughout my blog. So here he is dealing with a highly regulatory legal issues, and, but he's bringing what he enjoys in life. And uh, uh, so he brings a levity and himself to it. Uh, uh, you go back to these players, you know, you, Danny Schwartz that writes on Connecticut employment law. It's a blend of the, the case law and Danny just telling stories weaving in and uh, he tries to bring in context so that if there's a hurricane coming to the East Coast, you know, he's blogging on, uh, you know, what's the impact of working from home and everything else, you know, for all these major employers during a hurricane, because nobody's ever written on that before, or a snowstorm. Uh, you know, he's trying to bring in not levity, but the reality, and then just talk. Um, so it differs. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to have some people you know, let's say me, and I'm not really on my stride blogging as much right now, but I will get back there gradually. I don't really care if I cover everything about a subject. And there is no body of law as to legal blogging, so I'm, I'm a little bit free. But my blog may have started about how to do this, how to do that, how to do that. And after a while, you just get sick of that. So then what you blog about is stuff you'd like to and that you enjoy. So when I see something I enjoy, and I know I might meet somebody as a result of it, I just, just go out. So there's all these different uh, different uh, ways that people can go. Uh, I, I do, going back to that though, if you're picking a niche and you can report on it, so just report. <clears throat> so if it's probate litigation and you can get the appellate decisions delivered to you, stick to it. You don't have to report on every one, but report on the ones that, that pique your interest, that look like they're interesting, and get them out. And if you do that, you know, in a way that's enough that you're giving people what they need, you win. You, you won. Um, because you're the only one on that issue. Um, if it's, you know, cannabis law, 
it was okay. You know, it was Hilly Bricken in Seattle, you know, 26 years old when she was the only one. But now that she's probably, you know, 33 years old and a, you know, rock star internationally on cannabis law living in LA, uh, you know, as a result of the blog, you know, it, 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 she can be more, more open and all the different stuff you have to cover. Is there any, any questions? <clears throat> Does this, does this style work for you guys? I mean, next week we'll just cover, okay. <laughs> Sean says yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and if anybody has questions, in, you can go to the group too and just say, hey, I was thinking about this or could you talk about th this week? Um, that'd be great. <clears throat> you know, I just picked two topics. The next one being uh, the use of social media ancillary to a blog. And... Uh, <clears throat> We'll cover, you know, what does Facebook mean? What does LinkedIn mean? What does Twitter mean? Um, in conjunction with with publishing, but it, but if you and then always, so people are coming into the group, they're getting a little bit of coverage on those things. But feel free to go to the group and drop in your question and say, "Hey, if you guys could talk about this next week, you know, we we would we do this. You know, I'd like nothing better for it to be exactly that." You know, here's what we got. You know, here's 10 minutes on this or 15 minutes on this. And then the rest would be questions that people dropped in ahead of time or that have at the time. All right. Well, that seems like a good spot to wrap up. So thank you, Kevin. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Um, I'll make sure to send all of you an email with a recording of today's discussion. And I can also attach a link to the LinkedIn legal blogging group if you're not already a part of it. And so, yeah. And one, one, and one thing I will mention. Yeah. Like, I used to tell it to people when I used to travel for conferences. I said, I, if I get to the end, uh, I, I would travel home. My wife would say, well, do you tell people what you did? You know, and I'd be someplace. And I go, I guess I never did. <laughs> she goes, well, remember that you she used to say, remember next time, tell people what you do. So anyway, uh, Lexblog is, is, a, is a company that's based in Seattle, uh, about 20 folks. And we provide a, a managed WordPress solution. Uh, for bloggers, uh, legal bloggers uh, around the world. And uh, in, in addition to that, we, we have a community of legal bloggers. It's about 30,000 uh, strong, um, whose content is aggregated and curated at Lexblog. Um, the, uh, they, they all have at no cost, you know, profiles for their blogs themselves as, as authors and their, their firms. So if anyone wants to have their blogs in Lexblog, all they got to do is go to Lexblog and it'll join and their blogs can come in. If they have questions about it, somebody will be able to answer questions um, for them. It's not indexed by us. So your blog still remains precedent over on uh, Google at the other place. Um, and if you need help on blogging specifically and you need help on a platform, et cetera, you know, we have a, a turnkey solution, which are our clients license um, on, on an annual basis. So happy to talk to anyone our company is. We have some really fine people uh, that work there. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a nice Take care. Nice evening. Bye bye. Thank bye. you.